Hello, welcome to section two of data communication. We'll be looking at a communication model in this section. Now, when we communicate, uh, we, what we do is we share information. And what information we share is known as data. Now, this data can be text, can be numbers, can be images, can be audios, and can be videos. Now, data communication is simply the exchange of data between two or more devices via some transmission medium, which we'll be looking at in our next session. It has to do more of the transmission media. What kind of medium are we using? So for data communication to occur, the communicating devices must be able or must be a part of that communication system. And this is made up of both hardware and software devices. Right. Now, the effectiveness of a data communication system now depends on four uh, fundamental characteristics. The first one to look at is delivery. Now, with regards to movement of data from one point to the other, the data must be delivered to the correct destination. You need to know whether you are moving from an IP address with a dot 10 to a dot 20 or from one device to the other. Now delivery is key. Another one that we want to look at or another characteristic we want to look at is the accuracy. The data that was delivered, is, there, is it an accurate representation of what was sent? Now all those things need to be checked. The next one is the timeliness of the data being delivered. Now, this data has to be delivered on time. This is what we are calling the real-time transmission. Then the final one is JITA. And this is the variation in the packet arrival time, when the packet was sent and when the packet gets to arrive at its destination. So these are the four main characteristics that we want to look at if we are dealing with the effectiveness of data communication system. Now, we want to look at the five components making up the data communication system. First of all is the message we are or we want to send. Now this message is the information to be communicated to or what information you need to send across. The next is the sender who is sending the data. If you have you have a message, the point where the message is being initiated from has to do with the sender. Then of course we have the receiving end, the receiver. And this is where the data arrives or your message gets to arrive at. Then, like I said earlier on, we have the transmission medium. And this is the physical path through which your data is going to go through. We are, we are going to look at the UTP cable. We are going to look at the fiber optic cable. Then we are going to look at the wireless medium through which message can go through. So that's the physical Medium. Then the protocol has to do with the set of rules that govern the data communication. Okay, and this represents an agreement between the communicating devices. So they need to understand or agree on a set of rules through which they can communicate data. Now, a simplified communication model has to do with the source, just like we saw in the main model. It has to do with the source the transmitter, the transmitting system, the receiver, and the destination. So the source is just like the sender. Then the transmitter or the receiver has to do with the receiver, just as we have. Then we have the transmitter that converts the data from the source into a transmittable signal. We'll be looking at signal later on in the course. Then we have the receiver that converts this received signal into data. So your message is being sent and the receiver gets to convert what has been sent into data. Then of course the destination takes and uses the incoming data. So below is the block diagram. We can see that it's divided into three main portions. We have the source system made up of the source and transmitter. Then we have the destination system made up of the receiver and the destination. Then we have in between these two, the transmission system. 
Now, we said that we, we send messages or what we send across the network has to do with data. Now, we need to know the various forms of data representation. And like I said earlier on, we, this includes text, numbers, pictures, audio, videos that we have. Text is a representation as a bit or, or it's represented as a bit pattern, a sequence of zeros and ones. Now, different sets of bits pattern have been designed to represent text symbols. We'll see that later in our course. Now, then we have numbers, which we are familiar with. We have images, which we are also familiar with, made up of matrices of, or matrices of puzzles, uh, which we are calling the picture elements, where the, each pixel is a small dot. Then we have audio. This refers to recording or broadcasting of sound or music, and is by nature different from text, numbers, and images. And this audio, it's, it is continuous, not of a discrete nature. Then we have videos, which is the broadcasting of a picture or a movie. Now, we want to look at data flow. How does data move from one end to the other? Now, the flow of data, in other words, the communication between two devices can be described as simplex, a half duplex, or a full duplex. So we have simplex, half duplex, or a full duplex. Now, with simplex, um, the communication is unidirectional. It's, in, it's like a one-way street. It's only one way. It goes in and does not come back. So we can look at a frame a mainframe and a monitor, or from your keyboard to a monitor. That's a one way. Whatever you type, you are able to see from the monitor. So this is a, a unidirectional form of communication, and only one of the two devices on the link can transmit. The other can only receive. Then we have the half duplex, where in this mode, each station can both transmit and receive, but here, not at the same time. The receiver would have to receive one at a time, or each station would have to receive data one at a time, not with both direction. Now, when the one device is sending, the other only can receive and vice versa. So the diagram shows the transmission or the data flow using a half duplex, where we have the direction of data at time one, then we have the direction of data at time two. Different um, ways of communicating. Now, that with this kind of flow, the entire capacity of the channel can be utilized for each direction. Now, we'll later come and see what capacity is when we are dealing with the Shannon capacity. Then we have the full duplex, and here, we, this can also be called a duplex. Now, both stations can transmit and receive simultaneously. So here we are having kind of like a two-way traffic. Now, signals going in one direction share the capacity of the link with signals going in the other direction. So below is a block diagram of a full duplex. Then we have the data communication tax. Now, there are various... Uh, technical complexities with regards to the simplification of the communication model. And here, there are several tasks that must be performed in the data communication model. The first is the transmission system utilization. Now, we should be able to have a system that will be able to transmit data from one device to the other. Then we have the signal generation, either an analog signal or a digital signal then there needs to be a synchronization. Now, we need to be sure that the data that has been sent is the same data that has been received at the other end. So we look at exchange management, we look at error detection and correction. Once the data is being sent, we look at the checksum to see whether the data sent is free of error. And once we detect that there's error on that data, then the necessary correction needs to be made. Then we have the flow control, how data is being moved from one end to the other. How do we control that? 
we have addressing, then we have routing. We'll be taking routing as a, a key topic which we'll discuss later in this course. Then we have security and network management. These are the various communicating, co communication tasks that we can have in data communication. So like I said earlier on, transmission system refers to the need to make effective use of transmission facilities. Recovery, on the other hand, is the concept distinct from that of the error correction. We have a block diagram showing a data communication model using text as the input. Now, here we have the source, just like we discussed earlier on. We have the source or the source system and we have the destination system. Now, we have the source and the transmitter, then we have the receiver and the destination. So once we have our source or we have our input information, here we are representing it with M, it goes through to the transmitter and that becomes, or it's a function of time, G of T. So that goes through the transmitter it gets transmitted. So it moves from text to a digital bit stream on this link. Then once it goes through the transmitter, it gets converted. Remember we said the transmitter converts our message to another format. So it converts it to analog signal, which we are representing as S of T or ST. Then this goes through the transmission system then the transmission system now converts it back to, of, takes the analog transmission, passes it through the receiver, then converts it to the digital bits, and that is received at the destination as text. So you realize that from text, we go to, we convert it to, or the text is of a digital nature, goes through the transmitter, changes it to analog signal, Goes, goes through the transmission signal with the analog signal, then passes it through receiver, which converts it to the digital bit, then comes out as text. So this is the process for a data communication model. This is the end of section two. I'll see you in section three.